Hello everyone, thank you for joining us uh, for another class. Uh, welcome uh, to anyone that uh, might be listening this, listening to us from another church, another country. Um, and also welcome to uh, the youth of the Good Shepherd if um, anyone is listening as well from, from our church. Uh, God bless you, thank you for being here uh, today. Thank you for taking time out of your day uh, to be able to listen to uh, the word of the Lord and also learn from his eternal uh, knowledge. Um, so today we have uh, we have uh, a class that's going to focus on evangelizing. That's that's the unit that we're in at the moment. Um, and uh, we gave our first class uh, on not la not last week but the week after that I gave our first class going into evangelizing and now we're going to continue building on that um on that block sorry I'm trying to find my page here okay um and we're focusing on on that topic right now uh, first of all I just want to say anyone that is interested in evangelizing uh at the moment sorry um, anyone that's interested in evangelizing at the moment, this is a, a good class for you to pay close attention to because uh, evangelizing is something that um, we all should be doing, but there are people that might be more interested in it in terms of um, wanting it to to actually learn about it a lot more and doing it in um, in the best way possible. So... Um, evangelizing isn't something that's a choice so all of us should be doing it however there are um, a lot of people that might be more interested in maybe uh, uh, teaching uh, a group to evangelize uh, in order to make sure that they're well equipped with uh, what is needed to actually make that happen um, but today we're actually going to learn uh, the responsibility behind evangelizing so why do we need to uh, actually evangelize? And that's what we're going to learn about. And also, shout out to our brother Dennis for last class. Thank you so much for everything you're doing, brother. And God bless your family and your ministry as well. Okay, so today, Unit 3, uh, called The Urgency of Evangelizing. Uh, study number 17, and uh, the title is The Responsibility of Evangelizing. That's what we're going to talk about today. All right, so if you have your book, go ahead and uh, take it out. If you if you are listening to us, uh, we're going to start on 2 Kings 6.24, and I'll guide you through there because we're going to jump around just a little bit. But just have your Bible ready, and I will uh, I will guide you through on that. All right, so 2 Kings 6.24, the Word of God says, And it happened after this that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his army, and went up and besieged Samaria. Now we're going to go to 25. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and indeed they besieged it. Now we're going to jump to 2 Kings 7, 3. Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? We're going to go ahead and go to verse 5. So 2 Kings 7, uh, now verse 5. And they rose at twilight to go to the camp of, Sy of Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. Now verse 6. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses, the noise of a great army. Uh, verse 7, Therefore they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact. Uh, verse 8, And when the lepers come to the outskirts of the camp, they went into one tent and ate and drank and carried from it silver and gold and clothing and went and hid it. Then they came back and entered another tent and carried them and carried some from there also and went and hid it. Um, and now verse 9, when they said to each other, "What are we doing? Is not, what we are doing is not right. This is a day of good news, and we are keeping it to ourselves." All right. So those are the verses. 
The main idea today is that there is a world that perishes without God. There is an urgency to go and preach the gospel. Amen to that. Uh, goal number one is acknowledge that we have in our hands the message of life and that thousands of spiritual lifeless people need. Number two is understand that a Christian is responsible for the salvation of those that are lost. And number three is start an evangelistic outreach in our own church, individually or with a group of believers. Okay, uh, oh, in our memory verse, uh, we actually already read it. Um, and it's uh, verse 9. We can read it again. Then they said to each other, what are we doing is not right. This is the day of good news and we are keeping it to ourselves. Okay, so um, this is the story of uh, an army that gathered up. A so Syria was trying to take control of Israel and um, they were continually attacked over and over and over um, and there came a great famine at that time. Um, Israel was in a very, very bad spot at that moment. Um, because the famine had become so great that it came to a point where um, the head of a donkey was being sold for a very large, uh, a very large amount of money. And uh, there was other things going on. But uh, before we get into that... Um, there was also uh, a time where they uh, they actually had lost all hope. So hope was lost. Um, things were looking very bad for Israel at that moment. Um, and it is said that approximately um, three people die every second across the world. So in the whole world... There are three people that are dying every second. Whew. There you go. Three people have just died at th this very uh, moment just by that. So that means that every day there are 250,000 people that are dying um, due to illness um, or anything else that might be happening in the world. And with uh, so many deaths occurring so rapidly, uh, it should give us a lot of urgency to go and talk to people about Jesus Christ. Um, the people of Israel were going through severe famine. Um, as I just mentioned. And they were attacked over and over again. So people were losing hope. And hope is one of the things that a lot of people have lost. Even in uh, this current age and time. Uh, if you go to a store. Or if you go. Um, or even if you're at your job. Um, wherever that might be, uh, so many people are so worried about uh, what's happening with Russia and Ukraine. That's one of the big uh, things that a lot of people are talking about right now. Inflation uh, is a huge thing right now. Everyone is talking about inflation, is talking about how expensive gas is, how expensive groceries are, how everything's almost double in price. And a lot of that stuff is true, and <clears throat> we seem to find ourselves in that same situation without hope. And if a lot of people are dying without hope, if a lot of people are dying without the knowledge of Jesus Christ, then that should give us a lot of urgency to tell them, you know, there is hope, and that hope is in Jesus Christ. And a lot of people might know kind of what Jesus Christ is, what he did when he died on the cross. But a lot of people are not following Jesus Christ. And that is one of the things that uh, we need to make sure that we're evangelizing is not just knowing Jesus Christ, not just knowing what he did, but following him um, in the way that he asks, asks us to live, which is very different from the world. And let me tell you one thing. Death can come to anyone. It does not respect age. It does not respect how... Uh, how healthy you are at the moment. Um, all those things can probably help you live longer. That That is true. But it doesn't give you a guarantee that you won't, that you'll be here tomorrow. Um, as we know, tomorrow is not promised to us. So um, knowing that, we need to have that urgency. A lot of people died due to COVID. Um, 
two years ago when it started in 2020. And I mean, people were perfectly healthy and they were dying due to this virus. Um, and now there's uh, shots for it and ways that you can get protected. But there was a lot of people that probably would have never expected to have COVID and then die pre, uh, from it um, when things started getting really bad in uh, 2020. So that's just a, a, a prime example right there that we don't know if we're going to make it here tomorrow. A lot of people might be um, kind of confident that they're going to be here tomorrow, but none of us really know if we are. Um, today could be our last day for many of us. We just don't know. So that gives us the urgency to make sure we talk to people about Jesus Christ. So let's look a little bit deep and go into our first topic here. A people completely lost. And we're going to look into how severe this famine was in Israel. Because remember they were, they were in famine at that time that the Syrian army was going to attack them. This is how bad things were. Uh, the head of a donkey was being sold for 80 shekels of of silver that is approximately three hundred dollars three hundred us dollars for a head of a donkey and the head of a donkey is that's an unclean animal and the head of a donkey is usually thrown out is not usually eaten so they were selling something that usually wasn't eaten by people for three hundred us dollars at that time or 80 shekels of silver I mean, just think about that. It's it, that's how bad things have gotten. It's like, um, it, it's like us paying the fifty dollars possibly to fill up your gas tank right now. I mean, there's a shortage on everything. Um, I believe we, me and my wife, walked into Walmart one time and there was no bananas. I mean, bananas is one of the things that you always expect to see there, and this time there wasn't. I mean, we just went through. Uh, a prime example of scarcity, how things were getting expensive. I believe uh, a bottle of um, a bottle of uh, hand sanitizer back in 2020 was selling for like 40 to 70 dollars, and I mean that's something you could have easily paid for uh, probably five or three dollars back um, back before the pandemic happened. And um, also, uh, there was a, a coarse grain, um, a plant called the pigeon manure. That was also being sold for uh, five shekels of silver, which is approximately 15 U.S. dollars. And a plant that's called the pigeon manure is probably a plant that's not very popular or people would usually pay a large amount to get something like that. Um, but people were because that's how bad the situation was. Um, it even got so bad that... Uh, there was actually cannibalism going on. Mothers were cooking and eating their own children. I mean, that's how bad things were at this time. It's a, it's it's just such an uh, such a sad moment for something to get that bad, where you have to eat another human just to survive. I mean, it, it's it's unthinkable sometimes. But this is the people. This is how bad things were for the people at the time. Um, and uh, even though this is a very scary scene, it's not much different than um, than today. Now, yes, we have probably more modern comfort and uh, a lot of uh, different things that make life a little bit, a little bit more comfortable for us in this day. But even with that, there's a a, a huge spiritual hunger that is still within people and people are now consuming more alcohol, more drugs, um, many different things to try to fill that void that can only be filled by Jesus Christ. Um, if you just go on your laptop or computer, even your phone, and you type in how much alcohol did the U.S. sell last year? you probably be shocked at the numbers of how much alcohol is being sold in the United States. It is insane. Um, cigarettes are constantly being sold as well. Uh, tobacco products. Here in Smithfield, where I live, there are probably 
uh, four to five tobacco shops that I know of, and they are open all the time and seem to be prospering very well because people keep buying tobacco. So it's no uh, secret that people are searching for something, but they're searching in all the wrong places, which is more, <clears throat> which is more important for us to go out there and evangelize and let people know that there is hope in Jesus Christ. Now, point number th- two is, it is a powerful salvation. Um, salvation only comes from the Lord. And salvation came from the Lord, even in the story that we read. I mean, the Syrian army was ready to attack Israel. Israel was not in a good spot. They had zero chance of being able to survive another attack from the Syrian army. But the Syrians heard noises of a large army that was headed for their camp. And they thought um, the people of Israel had probably paid uh, Egyptians or Hittites to come after them. But that wasn't the case at all. It was Jehovah actually fighting for them because salvation comes from the Lord when everything is putting you down and you have no way to move forward the Lord is the one that opens those pathways for you to walk down on he is the one that provides salvation for you and God has instruments to use uh, to make sure that he's taking care of you now here's where we get to the part where the leopards actually were getting ready to possibly die in the um, gates of the city. Now, leopards are, leprosy is a disease um, that caused people's uh, skin to basically rot away. And uh, they would uh, die after times and because they couldn't get their skin under control. It was a, a very terrible disease that existed more in the past times. And... Um, Leopards weren't allowed to enter the city. Um, People were possibly scared that this disease could spread around to another person um, if they were to be close to a leopard. Um, I don't know if that's actually true. I haven't checked into the the scientific facts to see what caused the infection of lepers. But um, this is something that people believed on on that time. So they, they didn't get close to lepers and they were left outside the city. They couldn't enter the city. But these leopards um, were basically waiting to die until they asked themselves, why are we just standing around here if we're kind of if we're basically already dying from this disease? So they decided to go to the Syrian camp in order to just kind of beg for their life. Maybe they will let them be slaves there uh, without just dying in the city of the in, the in the gates of the city. So when they got there, uh, because the the Syrians had fled thinking that there was a large army coming to get them, the lepers now found an intact camp uh, with food, with silver, with gold, with everything there, clothing, everything that they needed. And they took some of that stuff and they hid it. They didn't want to tell other people of the great news of what they had found. But then they came to their senses and said, what we are doing is not right. This is a day of good news. We need to tell other people about this. And that's exactly what we need to do today. We have probably found, uh, we did actually find the best thing that can keep a man happy, which is coming to the Lord Jesus Christ and giving your life up to him. If we don't share that information, we are not much different than these leopards were taking gold, taking clothing, taking riches, and hiding it from other people, trying to make sure that they had enough for themselves. But we are not encouraged to take some for ourselves. We are encouraged to give it away because that's what Grace did. He gave it free of charge without charging people anything, and that's what was suspected of us as well as Christians. And point number three is an unescapable responsibility. The responsibility of evangelizing is not something that we have a choice with. It's not something that whether we want to, if we have time, if we don't have time. It's one of the things that we have to actually do. We have the antidote to sin. 
sin is all over the world right now. People are sinning more than ever. And for us to hold back the information that we have, that there is a way besides just sinning, besides just drinking alcohol nonstop, smoking whenever, smoking packs a day if we wanted to, there is an alternate way where you don't have to do any of those things and be happy and have salvation and have joy in your life. If we have that antidote, we need to share it with people. We need to make sure that other people know that there is more to life than just drinking. There is more to life than just going out and partying all day. There is more to life than just um, worrying, worrying about money and what the world has to offer. So that is our responsibility to make sure that we tell people, that we give an example, that maybe someone can come up to us and say, you know, why are you never panicking even though there's crazy stuff going around the world? That is the perfect opportunity that we can have to evangelize to somebody. So we got to make sure that we spread that antidote to sin. Um, we are responsible for our generation as well. Uh, there are many things out there in the harvest. Evangelizing isn't one of those things where, well, we don't really need to do it because there's not that many of that going on. There is a lot of that that we need to actually be spreading the word. That is something that we should work on daily. Yes, there are better, faster ways of communication. Now, for example, this YouTube video, people are going to watch this YouTube video um, and I can reach someone across the world from me um, that's many, many miles away because we have this technology that allows us to communicate to other people. But that does not mean that we should just chill because now we have other ways of communication. We need to use that to our advantage and still spread the message of the Lord around. Um, he wants us to speak to other nations. He wants us to speak to um, as much as much people as we can possibly speak to and uh, make sure we continue on that path to tell everyone of Jesus Christ. Um, to tell everyone that there is a different way to life. To make sure that people know that they can receive salvation. Um, and today could be your day of salvation. Uh, pray with us. If you are new uh, and you might not be able to make it to our church, that's okay. Find a church where they're preaching the word of God. Where you can actually congregate in. Where you can actually start growing and learning about Jesus Christ. And... Also, um, I know there's people that we are evangelizing to as well. Um, and it all starts by uh, making uh, the, the, the prayer of salvation um, and also attending church as well. Um, just confess to the Lord and tell Him that you believe in Him and what He did on the cross. And if you want to say that prayer with me right now, I invite you to do so. And... Um, if you need to reconcile with God, also, um, I invite you today to do this. You say with me, thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done. Thank you for allowing me, God, to know that you are the, the one that saves, that you are the one, God, that died on the cross for me one day. I believe in what happened on the cross. I believe that you have died. I believe that your, your blood actually cleanses away sins, God. And I ask you, God, to come into my heart, God, to, to actually cleanse me of my sins that I have done. I want to follow you. I want to take up that cross that it talks about in, our, in, in the Bible and follow you, God, every single day and not let the flesh win, but let it die, God, and let you live in me, God, from this day moving forward. Please allow me, God, to accept your word and allow me, God, to follow your word and to never faint in it. In the name of Jesus, God, and I believe that you are my Savior. Amen. If you have made this prayer with me today, then um, first of all, God bless you. Thank you for coming back to Christ if, if you haven't gone, if you strayed away from the, from the paths of God. And if you're new in the paths of God, then I encourage you to find a church where um, you can attend and where you can actually learn of the Word of God and grow spiritually. But this is what we're here for. 
this is our responsibility to go out there and evangelize and let people know that there is salvation. Our next class with our brother Dennis. Uh, God bless you, youth of the Good Shepherd. And I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their week.